All right, shit. Well, I'm King Renzo. I rap, of course, sing, song, write, all that shit, produce. Just a music guru, you know what I'm saying? I ain't being cocky, just being for real. I do all that shit, man. I've been rapping for a good little minute now, so it's just really about time that everybody started hearing me and shit, so that's where we at now. But I've been doing this shit for a good little minute, though. So, Renzo, where are you from? From right here in Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas, south side of Little Rock, you know. Born and raised, I ain't never lived no other place outside of Arkansas, outside of Little Rock at all. So this is all I know, shit, just a Little Rock way of life. Rough place, huh? Being yeah. in Little Rock? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shit. I mean, we got we got a couple stigmas and shit, but I mean, I feel like that shit everywhere, you know, everywhere, especially down here in the South. Like, that shit happens. Like, it's to the point now, it's just part of the culture, it's just a way of life, but it's just one of the few places down here where that shit's still, like, well and alive and, like, thriving every day, so. You know what I'm saying? It's, I feel like it's everywhere, though. It ain't nothing special, but we definitely, definitely got a lot of rough shit. What was it like for you growing up in Little Rock? I mean, shit, for me, I, again, feel like it was normal. I mean, well, I ain't gonna say normal, but it was it's kind of like basic, like everybody else, every other nigga coming out. You know what I'm saying? Single parent household for a while. Then my mama had remarried, and you know what I'm saying? That shit kind of helped, but by the time I, I feel by the time my mama remarried and shit, I was already. I ain't gonna say who I was, but I was already like seeing shit for what it was. So I already kind of was shaping up to be, you know what I'm saying, reality. Like I was already in re reality, like shit, this is what it is. Like I want, we can go to school, we can play, we can do all that shit. But I knew that when all that shit was said and done, we gotta come home and worry about bills and shit like that. So I understood that shit at a very young age. But at the same time, I still had a pretty decent, normal childhood. It just had a lot of fucking mishaps and shit in it, but same shit. Same stuff. When did you find yourself diving into music? Oh, uh, I felt really at a, I know it was at a very early age. I can't, you know what I'm saying, specify a specific date on it, but you know, I know it was very early. Like I knew that music was what I wanted to do and and I was good at it. I was like, you know, like every other kid be at school, getting in trouble for beating on the table with pencils and shit, freestyling, instead of doing my work a lot of times, but writing songs, I, I remember specifically, I used to, I used to write raps of other people write it down on paper and memorize it and go to school and see it like it's mine and see the reaction that I would get. And I was like, all right, they get a reaction from this shit. So if I put my own words on paper and just formulate my own, you know, little plot plan and my own story on paper, what kind of response would I get? And from there, I just, I just started and I never stopped. You know, so that's how it all started. So you started writing music by formulating, by, like, I guess, like, experiencing how other people's other other writers wrote. Right, right. Like look, like way pad. Like the way, like for instance, I'm a I'm a '90s baby, so I grew up on a lot of Cash Money, No Limit, you know, old ass UGK, PMC type shit, Bun B, all that old shit. You know what I'm saying? So, me hearing all that shit, it's like my mama's side of the family. It's all down south music. That's what every every day I'm hearing Master P. Every day I'm hearing you know Mr. Serve on. I'm hearing all that shit right there. And then on my daddy's side when I would go on the weekends and shit like that, I'm hearing up north Biggie Smalls, Nas. So it's like I, I had that mixture of hearing both sides of it. It's like that's I feel like that's how I how I'm able to write in, in so in such like I guess poetic form. Like I can formulate and put words together to express what is exactly what what's on my mind and what I'm feeling at the time. And I'm so good at it, and I feel like that's a big part of it because I had both sides of the, of the music. I had the down south, gritty, ratchet, in your face, it's dirty, it's raw, that's what it is. Then I had the, the clean, squeaky, you know, well-polished, New York boot bap, you know, freestyle music. I, I had both of that, so it's like consistently. So that shit just made me just like be able to just, I guess, I ain't gonna say be above, you know what I'm saying, certain people, but I was definitely above my age group for the age that I was. With, we were doing what the shit I was doing for sure. And I knew that early. What was the music scene like when you were getting started here in Little Rock? Shit, when I was getting started, man, it was like, it was, when I was getting started for real, you know, it was, I mean, it's Little Rock, we really ain't had no music scene, but I mean, I was listening to the Lil Johns and the, the Franchise Boys, and you know, the Yup in My White Tee shit like that. Like, that's when I really started to like rap. So it's like, I'm hearing all of this, this snap and pop, I guess, at, at that time, it was like, you know, middle school era, I'm hearing all of this shit. And that's when, yeah, that's when the whole, you know, DSR, Texas wave was real heavy. So main hold up, I done came down. We used to just freestyle play like that at school all the time. And I used to like, 
just be so good with words that when I do it, it's like I get a good reaction. So it's like that really kind of pumped my head up. And just seeing the music scene, like I grew up in, you know, the 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 early ages of we was what A R K. That's like that's that's the shit I grew up. In. That was my music scene for the city growing up for me. And that shit right there is like, damn, that was a fucking anthem. That was an Arkansas anthem. Still is to this day. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? They made time this music. It may not reach everywhere else, like, you know what I'm saying, other people wish and dream to, but that shit down here is still a fucking classic. And it's like, that's the era that I started in. That's when I really feel like figured out that I wanna do this shit. I wanna have me some shit that lasts 10, 20 years from now. And I just start, I start writing. I start listening to everything around me, just start going. Like, nonstop. If you ask me, I ain't stopped yet. <laughs> yeah, that's my next question. Is, um, what made you take it serious? Was, you know, right, right, you said right then. Yeah, I mean, shit. I just, I mean, that's part of it why I took it serious because, like, I like the response, you know what I'm saying? And I knew I could do this shit. But another part of this shit is, like I said, as a kid, man, we weren't always in the best of situations and shit. And I knew, it is, for me at that time, I didn't need, if you would have told me that rapping, what I was going to be doing, doing, I wouldn't have believed you because this shit was just a hobby of, from like a hobby of mine that I just so happened to be really good at. My first love has always been basketball. So it's like I figured that's gonna be how I take my family out of the, out of this shit. That's how I'm gonna be able to provide for my family to do basketball. But somewhere down the line, you know what I'm saying? It's like music just grabbed me and just like music always been there, but it just got a bigger impact, a bigger hold on me somewhere down the line, and I just started drifting out towards that. And my passion, I ain't gonna say it switched because I still love basketball, but it definitely shifted. To where, you know what I'm saying, I feel like the shit was, you know what I'm saying, was supposed to go, destined to go anyway, because it's like I said, I was always good at this shit. Did you play ball in school? Yeah, I played for, I played basketball at Dunbar. I started at Rice Hill, played ball for Dunbar, went to Central, High Springs. I played ball every, it's never been the basketball team that I tried out for that I did make. Gotcha, gotcha. So, you know what I'm saying, and I've been playing my whole life, because I'm Nick Cole. <laughs> I'm Nick Cole. I remember, I remember when I, you know, I know how you said how you used to write other people's lyrics on, um, just so you can, um, it's get a sense of how they wrote them, you know, you get the feel for it. Same thing. I, I used to kind of, um, I used to always ask for graph paper. Yeah. I used to want to add FL Studio. Oh, yeah, So I used yeah, to make yeah. my beats on graph paper when I'd be in class. Damn. Like, I could, I could just, you know, like, visually hear it. So, you know, I started Shit. early, like, 13, 14 with FL Studio, and I just graph paper all day. Damn. Kids claps, you know, my strings. I mean, I just have whole things Damn, <laughs> drawn out, go back in and put them into the computer and, you know and, and tweak as I built, you know? I still got some of my old books, like composition books from way back in the day. I still have paper all brown and shit, but I can still vividly read the lyrics on the paper. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I'm thinking about putting some of that shit out because it's still fire. In 2020, that shit I wrote back in 20, 2005, 2004 is still fire. It can be tweaked. It's in the vault. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely thinking about, you know what I'm saying, reincarnating and bringing and breathing some new life into it for sure. Yeah. You know, make another product. I got a whole nother fucking three, four mixtapes worth for just unreleased shit. All right, before you get into that, what is your first mixtape? Talk to us about it. Hey, <laughs> first project. My first project that I ever made, my very first project, uh, damn. I got the picture of the album cover is still on my Facebook. Uh, I want to say All Eyes on Me. Uh, God damn it. I know it, but it's, it's some shit. No, Man on Fire, that's what, it, that's what it's called. Man on fucking fire. And ironically, no fucking bullshit. I made that title or that mixtape, Man on Fire, after the fucking movie with Denzel Watch. No lie, just because I looked at that damn movie cover and I seen this shit and it just looked so action-packed, cinematic on the cover and I feel like that one fucking movie cover described how I felt for a whole album and I made it, the name of that damn movie, Man on Fire. like. I feel like I was just on fire at the time, like whether it was f for the right reason or for the bad reason, I was hot. <laughs> it's like so shit. I just put all that shit into it. It was the very first project I ever made, and I produced it myself. So that's you got, kind of you got a future project coming up. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out in March. March is coming out March 2021. I can't put a specific date on it because I don't want to tell the people a date and then something happen. I just want it to be perfect because it was supposed to come out on my birthday, December 8th, but you know stuff happened. I want this to be perfect. Cause this is my first studio, like whole studio beginning to end. It's my first whole studio project, so I want this shit just to be right for the people. I don't want to put out no, no B, cause the lyrics ain't BS. So I don't want the quality to be BS. I want them to be able to hear and feel everything I'm saying. But yeah, bad habits. I'm dropping it in March, March 2020, 2021. So definitely be on the lookout for that shit. How would you describe your recording style? Uh, shit. My, my style is like my process. It's just is. Yeah, are you the type that goes in freestyle? Do you write on pen oh, and no, pad? 
I mean, you kind of you kind of just go in there and flow melodies, and then come up with the lyrics after you go. And that's the thing. Melodies. That's the thing about I me. Mean, I I do all of that, but it's like I it, I guess it's pretty much just how I feel at the moment. If I feel like, for the most part, my boys will tell you that I go there with like a whole phone, five, six, seven, eight songs ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So I just like to stay ready because I know once you spend money to do something, this shit business. So when I don't want to go to the studio, spend X amount of dollars and sit in there and try to come up with some shit, like time is money. So if we spend money to get in this studio, I want to go there with my shit together, put my shit down, tell them how I want my shit to sound and keep it going. Like, you know, I don't like to waste no time. So I have a crazy ass process because sometimes, a lot of times I go in there just like that. Then it may be days I go in there with four songs that I already wrote. But I freestyle too, and like, and I don't even do the four songs that I wrote. I just do them two songs and like just really tweak them. I punch in or I freestyle all the way through. It really just depends on how I feel at the moment. Cause if I go to a studio with pissed off, some on my chest, you know, something really on my mind, I want to take some shit real quick. And I'm talking about like hit them where it hurt, like make them feel it off of one take. Cause I just I'm I'm a emotion. I guess it's, you could say emotional rapper. Like I rap off emotion. So if I'm feeling like Urgh, motherfuckers piss me off. That's most likely what I'm gonna talk about, what I'm gonna rap about. If I feel like today was a fucking good day, I'm gonna rap about some good shit. And you can hear my music and you can tell the style. So, you know what I'm saying? You can pretty much tell what type of day I'm having or what type of mood I'm in just from listening to my music. So. And you say you spent, you spent money on your career. How much you say you invested so far? Over t- like since I've been started, like yeah, rapping. Far, man. man, I don't even know if I can put a price on it. It's been so much fucking money. So much, man. Definitely and definitely in the high thousands for sure. I ain't gonna say a hundred thousand, but definitely in the high thousands. I say about a good thirty, forty thousand over my whole life of doing this shit. Definitely, definitely. If not more, and I'm don't I don't like, don't hold me to that number. It could be more, but it could be less. But I know I spent a lot of money on this shit. Say you make music based off of how you feel. Yeah. This is the next album that you got coming out in March. Um, Bad how Habits. Describe, how, would you, how would you describe that um, piece of work? Bad Habits, I mean, this project out of all the other, other projects I've ever done is it's special to me because it's in the name. Like, Bad Habits, like, I feel like this is my... This is my way of coming out to the world on my album. Like, all right, this is why I... You know what I'm saying? If you sometimes see me on you know, Instagram post or a status or whatever, and you sometimes see me saying something a certain way or whatever, this is why I say that. Like, it's just letting people into why I feel the way I feel a lot of times. And, and the ironic the part of the shit is, the album is called Bad Habits, and it started off like my song Colors, Think Fast. You know, this song's just like them upbeat, in your face, I'ma get your ass type song, cause them bad habits. But towards the end of the song, you can tell, cause I started making more common songs, more songs, more conscious of what the fuck I'm doing. So it went from, going crazy, fucking a nigga up, whatever, woo woo till, you know what I'm saying, I need to do this better, I, this is what I'm fucking up, I need to change this type of shit. It's just showing that I got bad habits like everybody else, but at the same time with me, I didn't find my bad habits, I'm also working toward correcting that shit so it's not a bad habit no more, you know what I'm saying? And you can all you hear all that from beginning to end, which is about 13 tracks on the whole project, so, or 14, I'm thinking about giving them a couple of bonus tracks, but you definitely gonna get that vibe and that, that feel listening to it from beginning to end. Now, I know we're in COVID and shows are difficult, yeah. but do you have any plans for 2020? Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of, I mean, I'd never stop playing it for, like at all. So, but I definitely got some shit coming up for 2020. I don't want to say nothing because it's still in the works and I don't want to say this stone, but I definitely got Lord willing this COVID shit, you know, die down and this vaccine hold up. <laughs> I'd be able to do some shows in January or as early as February, March before I drop my, my project. So have you thought about doing online shows? I thought about it, but it's only been a thought because, you know, it's like the whole, I don't know. I don't know. I thought about it for sure, though, because I thought about doing virtual shows, like just making a whole setup, you know, performing a couple tracks. I, I even thought about doing my album release online and like streaming it. You know what I'm saying? It's just performing every song and just letting people tune in, like Instagram Live or something. But it's just the time to, you know, set all that shit up as far as well as finish the project as well. So that's why I only just thought about it. But I definitely... You know what I'm saying? Popped in my mind for have sure. Thought of a, do you currently have a Patreon or OnlyFans? No, I don't. Have, I thought about a Patreon. I, I was on it the other day, but I didn't sign up. I don't have neither one. Neither one. I think those are good uh, avenues for, especially artists, giving um, people insight to their behind the scenes, how yeah. they record music. You don't have to use it like how you know female models are using it, but just <laughs> a, like an open doorway to 
being able to see a whole nother personality to you, you know, right, like right. that's a way they could see how you record or, you know, be able to make music with you or just conversations, some stuff that you don't even put on IG or old stuff that's deleted off of IG could be refunded to there. Right. And that's, yeah. I'm trying to like, that's one thing I got to learn as an artist because like, like I said, I'm, I was taught to stay, you know, stay, no offense, stay the hell away from cameras and shit like that. So it's like me oh, having, yeah. me having to be, you know what I'm saying? This guy, woo woo, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, it's, 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 it ain't new to me, but it's uh, definitely me stepping out of my comfort zone doing all this shit. So it's like something I still got warm up to, but you know, I'm, I'm getting there. That's one thing that I feel like not even, not hold me back as an artist, but it just, it make me not go as hard as I think I'm going because I don't, the, uh, the music is there. But the social presence sometimes, because I'm 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 not just a camera guy like that, but I feel like me stepping that up and me putting adding it to my my whole arsenal or whatever everything I do musically, it'll definitely like like skyrocket. Most definitely, I, I think I, I'm a strong believer in people having their own websites, doing their own shows, putting their yeah. own albums on there, funneling yeah. people to their own projects. I have a friend as a DJ, um, he was on Facebook, he was getting thrown off. He tried to DJ on Instagram, mm -hmm. get thrown off. He was a Twitch. Yeah. End up having it would develop his own website right. and start funneling people there and people will go there and watch his live streams so it's, it's very possible yeah. you know you could do your own you know shows start you know with I facebook the instagram podcast and, and shit like funnel them even podcasts yeah yeah for sure podcasts i definitely are, thought about that are 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 golden tickets they help out a lot you know just yeah. daily conversations and see that's the thing man because i know like Music is like, I know to, in order to, like, it's so much other stuff that I'm good at. It's so much other stuff that I want to do outside of music. But I just feel like music right now is my quick way to get to the, you know what I'm saying, the springboard for me to even be able to do everything else. But I know music, I'm definitely beyond music. I'm definitely bigger than music. Like, I want to act, you know what I'm saying? I want to produce, like, seriously produce, like how people seriously produce my music. I want to seriously produce other people's music and get credits. I'm not talking about just to do it and say I've done it. I want to get credits and get residual income and make sure that we getting paid from it. I want to actually start uh, like a whole production come media, all this shit, man. <laughs>